Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. I previously asked you guys what kind of video you want to watch and you request this. To be very honest, this is also the kind of video I always want to make. Many of my listeners, they are also from a more diverse background also, or you may also want to actually embark a different journey, move to another country as an aspiring lawyer and to do something uh, different in your life. This video is probably for you in that case. For some of you guys who don't know me, I am originally from Hong Kong. Well, I was actually born in mainland China and I moved to Hong Kong when I was like one year old. So I was basically raised in Hong Kong and I spent the majority of my life there. Uh, three years ago, I got this opportunity to study in uh, Cambridge in the UK. So right now I've stayed in the UK probably around three years, not very long. Uh, the first issue was probably the issue of self-doubt, particularly two areas. Firstly, it's about languages, because even though I lived in Hong Kong, and many people say it's an international city, and yes, like people there, they usually speak pretty good English. Back then, I wasn't using English that much in terms of making friends or having deep conversations, because if you don't go to an international school, you basically communicate with all your friends or family in Cantonese and my family doesn't speak in like they don't speak in English anyway so it doesn't make sense for me to actually like speak in English in my daily life so that was my first concern when I moved to the UK I tried to like walk outside of my comfort zone to actually make long-lasting friends uh, with people from other parts of the world so I basically need to use English uh, to have deep conversation with those people in order to make like re real friendships because you just couldn't have small talks all the time. Back then when I was in Hong Kong, I didn't need to like make those kind of friends. I just didn't have that many opportunities to do so. The first week was the most difficult week for me in Cambridge. Well, first of all, uh, the people I hang out with, uh, they were all from different parts of the world. It, it, it was a bit difficult for me to find something that we can both click with each other. I think the situation kind of changed when the first time I actually brought some of my Latino or European classmates to some Asian cuisines, I kind of introduced my food and cultures to them and they find it interesting. And from then on, we just kept hanging out with each other, learning about each other more, have conversations more often. I have probably like five really good friends back in Cambridge that we had now almost like five times a week. It was definitely one of the best years of my life, to be very honest. And I never regretted that decision. And I would say the second self-doubt for me, I'm different in this country because uh, this may sound a little bit weird, but it's always good to feel like you're invisible in a country because they're, they're all Asians back home or like they're all Hong Kong people back home. So I'm not anyone else. I don't feel like um, I would draw any kind of attention, but it's not like that I draw any attention anyway in in the in UK. You, you always find that everywhere you go, there are just many people who are different from you. A very clear example is like I went to gym like maybe three, four times a week. I was always the only two Asians in that gym out of like 50 people there. There's just always a sense of comfort when I'm back in Hong Kong and Asia during vacations or holiday where I can just become invisible. A second problem I have about living abroad in a different country is it is extremely difficult to make long-lasting friendships in London specifically. When you are a student uh, at uni, it's super easy for you to make friends because you go to a, you know, uh, a party night and you make friends. You go to class, all your classmates are your friends. Immediately you click with many of them. It's just so easy for you to actually extend your social circle. But after you graduate, especially when I moved from Cambridge to London alone, most of my friends back in Cambridge, they are from all over the world and they already lawyers back their country. They didn't intend to be a lawyer in London. So they probably moved back to their country and be a great lawyer there, which is good for them. But for me, I do always have this dream of mine to pursue a career in London or maybe in the US. So I just need to take my chance. Some of my best friends back in Hong Kong, they are maybe people from high school. We are still talking from time to time, even today uh, on Facebook. But you always lack that level of interaction you have when you are talking to someone in person. Especially when I moved to London, I literally have zero friends uh, uh, like at that moment because all my relatives or family members, they don't, they, they, they don't live in the UK. So 
I literally, that was a pretty harsh moment, coupled with the fact that I got rejected by so many law firms at that time. So it was probably the reality you may face as well if you don't have that connections already in London. But if you have, I think you would be doing okay. But later on, I was pretty lucky that I started working as a paralegal. I met a few maybe people from Malaysia, from Singapore. I also met some really good European friends at work as well. People usually, they stick to their own group of friends like they know at uni. For me, I didn't have this advantage because all the people I know or I was very close with, they went back to their country to pursue something better. So it was just always a difficult time for me back then, like, like yeah, about making long lasting friendships. It's like you know a lot of people, but also you don't know any of them because you don't have that kind of connections or like the benefits of actually hanging out with each other on a very regular basis. But honestly, like in the past few months, it was also a bit hard in the sense that some of my friends I'm quite close with also decided to move back to their country after the whole COVID situation. So like recently, it was also a bit tough in terms of like, m uh, like you know, getting to know other people. In the past three years, although I mainly live in the UK, I also moved back to Hong Kong maybe for a month for two, I moved to Italy for two months for an internship, for example. So the thing is that when you're always not in the same place for a long time, it's always hard for you to readjust every time and also make new friends each time. Because every time you make new friends, you gotta move on to another place. So that was probably the difficult part for someone like me who want a more international career. And I do find that this is probably the most unbearable part of like pursuing an international career as well. It made me sound so sad and I also realized that due to my personal ambition or the way I live, it's not very... Yeah, it's just more difficult for me to actually hang out with the same group of people every now and then. And I just need to appreciate the fact that there are always sacrifices for the things you want to do. That being said, living abroad in London, I also, I have met a lot of amazing people. Even those people maybe I'm not like really cl close with, but I learn about their story. It's just amazing. In the past years, I was always lucky to have met someone or like some friends that I could click with. Even maybe it was for like shorter period of time, but I always understand another person's culture, their upbringing and I make friends from literally every part of the world Latin America, Europe, East Asia, Southeast Asia like just every part I just feel like I'm more open-minded and more receptive is how you say it receptive of why people are doing things like that or why people are thinking this way I just appreciate their differences in upbringing or different culture so it just I think it makes me grow person at a personal level, which I think is a good thing uh, for my adulthood. Next thing I want to mention is about the cultural differences as well. Quite honestly, British culture is a bit different from what I experienced in Asia. I usually try to be the kind of person who are more who is more direct. So if I don't like something, I try to tell you I don't like this. So. You gotta like, you know, make changes or whatsoever. Just we need to deal with the problems immediately. I usually prefer like even when it comes to friendships or any kind of relationship that uh, the kind of person I'm dealing with, they are like more direct regarding what they want or what they think. So when it comes to dealing with people who I can't really second guess what they're thinking, that might be a bit more difficult for me to know how to deal with them. I always find it tricky, is especially when it comes to training contract application, when I got the feedback call. I remember there was one time, uh, this lady, uh, this recruiter called me and told me about my performance. Everything she said, like, oh, your interview, like your case study was good. Your partner interview was really well done as well. At the end, they didn't accept me, accept my training contract. So I was like, Maybe you could just tell me directly what I did wrong and what I could do to improve. I think that's more constructive. I really appreciate someone who gives me a reality check, telling me what I can do to be better, rather than giving me all the kind words. Food, I mean food, I mean honestly, uh, the UK is not famous for like having the best food. London is not that bad to be honest. Like I can always go to different kinds of cuisines and different kinds of restaurants. 
and the food options are pretty diverse given that there's so many different kinds of people living here so asian um mid, uh, middle east you know tacos i love mexican food although of course like if you want to like have like sushi or legit ramen then you can't really compare it to like japan for example but the thing is in general i'm pretty happy with the food situation here as long as you know i, I you just need to know where to find the best restaurant another point i want to mention is that the drinking culture here Honestly, if you want to be a like aspiring lawyer in London, if you actually drink, it would be good for you as well because like usually law firm events, you need to drink some wines and stuff like that. But also, if you are not into those things, it's still okay. Like London is a pretty, I think, mean, receptive for different kinds of people. And but I would say if you drink, definitely you can also bond better with other people as well. Personally, I think I'm a pretty good drinker. Uh, I would like to think so at least, unless the situation actually calls for it. I wouldn't actually drink that much to be honest. And the last thing I want to mention is uh, having lived in the UK for the past three years, there's also a lot of self-improvement that I have made and I'm really proud of as well. Actually, having lived in a different country is already a step outside of your comfort zone in the first place and I did it and I didn't like back down or just like give up after my master's degree but the fact that I actually insist on that and keep chasing for that goal I think I was pretty proud of that because yeah, if I gave up earlier, I wouldn't have made it this far and I wouldn't be talking to you guys in front of the camera as well. Also for my health, health as well, I think in Asia, there are just so many food options and a really good but a little bit unhealthy food for me so that I get used to that kind of like living style. But in the UK, I have more chances to actually eat healthier. There are more restaurants and places tailor to people who are more conscious of, of like health related issues or like gym yeah i also have gotten into gym as well for the past year and i'm actually very happy about it i always told myself that i gotta start going to the gym like as soon as i got my training culture and after i got it i just have no excuse not going anymore so in the past year i went there i literally in the past year like whole year i went there at least three four times a week and I never, I didn't, yeah, I, I, I always went there every week. I didn't stop for even a week, so I was pretty proud of that as well. The good part about living abroad is you are going to try, try some new thing or like to immerse yourself to the culture. So you can pick some good things about that culture and actually adapt yourself to it. So guys, I think, yeah, this video is a little bit too long now and I think I probably have already shared all the things I want to talk about at the moment. I hope. Some of you guys might find it useful, especially for those who want to move to a different country in the future and or for those who actually want to be familiar with uh, the life or culture in the UK before deciding to move here. I hope you enjoyed this video and give me a thumbs up for this video and show me your support. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. I will try to post fairly regularly every week and I will see you guys next time. Bye.